Welcome to Basic Gospel, everybody. With Bob Christopher and Richard Piper, I'm Bob Davis, here to welcome you to our weekly teaching edition as we study through the pages of the New Covenant Journey Study Guide. If you don't yet have your copy, just go online to basicgospel.net slash teaching. Again, that's basicgospel.net slash teaching. And as a reminder, the phone lines are not open today so that everyone can listen and benefit from this study. So with that, it's Basic Gospel's weekly teaching edition, everybody. And now here's Bob Christopher. Well, thanks, Bob. We are going through the New Covenant journey. It's a journey that's based on four promises, the fact that this new life that we have in Christ is spirit-led. It's a life that is assured by the very person of Jesus Christ, the fact that he lives because he lives, we live. Mm -hmm. It's a life that's based on relationship. We actually get to know God personally personally and intimately, Mm -hmm. and it's built upon the foundation of forgiveness, the fact that God took away our sins once and for all. And this week, we're going to take a look at just how God did that. And we're going to take a look at the death of the one, Jesus Christ, Christ's finished work on the cross. And I know for all of us, uh, there's no one that can say, this isn't true of me. We've done stuff in the past, and we probably didn't get caught but there's this guilt that uh, hung with us, that just haunted us, and it caused us to ask some questions, questions like, can God forgive me of this particular act? Can God forgive this sin? Does he hate me because I did such a thing? Am I lost? If we're all honest with ourselves, we will say, yes, we've asked those questions in the past. Maybe some of our listeners right now are asking this very question. Well, the cross of Jesus Christ is what gives us solid answers and to help us see that God really does love us. And so that's what this chapter is all about, the cross of Jesus Christ and the fact that he finished his work there. And we are on page 52 in our study guide. So if you're following along in the study guide, turn to 52, and we are going to start this particular chapter addressing the sin problem. That's a big that's problem. A problem. Might, uh, might be a problem. Might yes. be a problem, and it's something that's been around since the very beginning mm-hmm. of humanity. And we're going to start right there and take a look at what happened in the book of Genesis at the, in the garden with Adam and Eve. We're going to see how the sin problem originated and how it impacts us uh, here and now. So top of page 52, starting uh, with the sin problem. So how did sin enter the world and what is its results? In Genesis 2, 16 and 17, uh, Moses wrote this, And the Lord commanded the man, You are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat of it, you will surely die. So, Richard, what was the warning that God gave to Adam regarding the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? To avoid it at all costs, because it, the cost would be death. If, if you eat that tree from that tree, you will die. That, that's a pretty strong warning. That is a very strong warning. Now, is that restrictive? Was that limiting to Adam and Eve? Was it uh, imposing on their freedom as human beings? Or did they have other opportunities as far as the garden was concerned and other trees to eat from? That's, That's a tough question to answer because you and I, as soon as we were told not to eat of that tree, we'd be standing there staring at the tree. Right. Adam and Eve were completely innocent, completely perfect beings, one with God, face-to-face communion. They had the entire world to live in. And, and all God said was, leave this tree alone. Yes. That was not restrictive at all. There was the tree of life. There was other trees. Yes. Everything was open and available to them except for this one. And the consequence of eating that tree was was death. Yes. They had never seen death. Yeah. I, I wonder if that really registered as to what God was saying. I don't know. It's, it's, it doesn't say. It doesn't say at all, does it? But they had never seen death. They knew nothing about death. Uh, They only knew that if they ate of this tree of the knowledge of good and evil, death would be the result. Yes. Now, um, in Genesis 3, 
we see Eve kind of taking a look at this this tree, and the serpent is there. And the woman said to the serpent, this is Genesis 3, verses 2 and 3, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it or you will die. So how did uh, Eve embellish on the words of God to Satan? She said, uh, not only can you not eat it, but you can't even touch it. little addendum. There. little yeah, addendum. A little yes. addendum. And, and that's so important for us to not go outside of what the Word says. Yes. Every time we go outside and try to add some of our own thinking, our own understanding, uh, I think that's when we get in trouble. That's when we become vulnerable to the temptations of the evil one, mm -hmm. the temptations of this world, even the temptations that are there as a result of our own flesh. Yes. So I think we need to stick with what the Word of God has to say. I think this is a very important lesson to us. So Eve embellished on that. Um, so we asked the question, did both Adam and Eve understand that death would be the consequence? Yes. We see that, don't yes. we? So God had clearly said that to Adam. Adam, I guess, spoke that to mm -hmm. Eve. And so they both knew that death would be the consequence of their action of eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now, like I said, I don't think they understood what death was because they had never seen death. They had never uh, known anything that experienced death. Mm -hmm. That was a foreign idea, a foreign reality to them. But God said that it is a possibility. It yes. will be the consequence. So how did, how did the serpent sow doubt in Eve's mind? In Genesis 3, 4, and 5, you will not surely die, the serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So how did the serpent sow doubt in Eve's mind? God is, is, is holding out on you. He's holding back important information that is, that is really vital to your life as, as a human being. If you don't have this, if you're not like God, then, then you're nothing. Therefore, God doesn't like you. So the temptation was you can be like God. Yes. You can be just like he is. Well, what a temptation. I mean, who wouldn't want to be like God? Who yeah. wouldn't want to be able to speak and, and see things come into existence? Who wouldn't want to be in total control of, of anything and everything? Who wouldn't want to be free to do whatever you so choose to do? Those are the things that are, um, you know, attached to God. That's what makes him yes. God. Uh, and it's just wonderful that God is love and that his freedoms are tied to the very fact that his essence is love. So everything that he freely chooses to do is compelled and motivated by love, not by any other uh, characteristic, just by his love for mankind. That's quite amazing, isn't it? Yeah. And who wouldn't want that? Excuse me there. But... Um, <laughs> So Satan said, you can be like God. So what was the result of this conversation? Well, when the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate it. Mm -hmm. So Adam was sitting there listening to this whole conversation. Yes. It wasn't like he was uh, off hunting or fishing or that sort of thing and came up and Eve said, uh, here's, here's dinner, honey. No, I think he... <laughs> I think he knew exactly what yes. was happening. And so he freely chose to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But how did this tree uh, take on kind of a new look to Eve after the serpent's temptation? Well, the, you know, she wanted what Satan said she could have or the serpent said she can have. But as soon as she ate it, and as soon as Adam ate it, then they realized something terrible had happened. Everything changed. And, and I love the way the, the Bible puts it. Their eyes were opened, and they realized they were naked. It, 
it, the change was that stark. I mean, beforehand, yes. they'd been living in complete innocence, face-to-face -face communion with God, and Satan tempts them. They give in to the temptation, and it's like the lights went off. You know, it's just everything changed, and it was horrible. And now they're living in fear. Yes, yes, indeed. So Satan looks, you know, at Eve and talks to her and says, you can be like God. You're, you're not going to die. You will know good from evil. That's a good thing. That's a, that's a positive thing. So this tree became desirable for gaining with wisdom. It was pleasing to the eye. It looked good for food. Um, so in that, we basically see the world system starting yes. to develop. Uh, John writes about this in his first letter. Uh, it, 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 he says, you know, these things are not from God, uh, the boastful things, the, the pride, and all, all of that. And here we see that taking shape yes. right before our eyes in this, this particular story. Everything that the world is, that's when it originated right there. And Eve bought into it. And she said, this is good. And so did Adam. And as you said, their eyes were open and they realized they were naked. And what did they do? They sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Who yeah. told them to do that? Well, God? they did. <laughs> yeah, they did. That was that was their own understanding. Uh -huh. Hey, we've blown it. We've messed up. Our eyes are opened. We see that we're naked. We've got to do something to cover ourselves uh, so that God doesn't see us for who we really are. Mm -hmm. So they made fig leaves uh, for coverings. Now, I have to ask some questions here, and, and a specific one that arises from the story it says that the day they eat of it, they would surely die. Yes. But we don't see them dying physically. That's what we think of as far as death mm -hmm. is concerned. Yeah. There's a body in a casket. Yeah, God would squish them like a bug or right. something. Yeah. Well, that didn't happen. So did they die, and what kind of death was it? Well, the answer is yes, they had to die. And, and we see in this, this fear-based response of, oh, we're naked, we'd better make some covering for ourselves. What they had lost was their communication with God, that direct spiritual connection with God. The Holy Spirit left them. They died spiritually. Yeah. So we see a pattern uh, that, that develops as a result of this, that... You know, God breathed life into them, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit. There was this, this connection, and they had their being and everything in, in God. Their life was in him, and his life was in them. And when they ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they forfeited that spiritual life. Yes. They died spiritually first. And then many years later, they died physically. Mm -hmm. Their bodies went into a grave. And we see kind of the, the reverse of that happening in the gospel message. Yes. That we first receive life, spiritual life, with the promise of new physical life. Yes. That these bodies will go from being mortal to being immortal, mm -hmm. to being perishable to being imperishable. That's the good news of this gospel message. So death, the whole process of death, is reversed in the gospel. So we have to ask the question, what brought this on? What brought death on as a consequence? Well, we see it in the New Testament in Romans, the wages of sin is death. That's exactly what yes. God told Adam and Eve. If you eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil— that sin and the consequence of that sin is death. That is a heavy consequence. And you know, um, mankind has been trying to figure out a solution for death apart from faith in Jesus, mm -hmm. apart from a reliance on God to reverse that whole death process. You can look within the realm of science. Uh, there is an incredible uh, wealth of knowledge within 
the scientific world. We know lots and lots and lots and lots of stuff about how these bodies function. Uh, we get down into cycles, how, how chemicals react with one another so the bodies can function, how enzymes work, how proteins are broken down, the various chemicals that are needed within the body to break down those proteins so that we can have energy so that our muscles can be built and sustained and, and all of those sort of things. We even know how the chromosomes are all lined up and, and how that looks. And we're even getting down to the genes on the chromosomes, what they, what they direct and control of as far as uh, different features in, in our bodies. We know a lot of knowledge in the scientific world. We know how diseases attack the body. We've even come up with solutions and cures. But within the realm of science, there is no information about preventing death. There is no information about uh, defeating death and bringing everlasting life into being. There is no ounce of knowledge within the realm of science that mm -hmm. deals with this death issue that happened in the garden yes. many, many years ago. There's only one place to go to get the death problem settled, and that's God himself through Jesus, through his death, his burial, in his resurrection. So the consequence of sin is death. That's the condition that we were left in. Yeah. That's a that's a that's a tough place to be. Absolutely. Well friends, it's Basic Gospel's weekly teaching edition on our study guide of course is entitled The New Covenant Journey. If you don't yet have your copy, we encourage you to uh, go online to basicgospel.net slash teaching and there you'll find the uh, the entire page with all the information on this particular study and the opportunity to uh, request your, your copy as well. Uh, you will see the uh, teaching edition page in there. If you, if you have not been able to join us during the uh, course of the uh, first few weeks of the study, we encourage you to uh, get that study guide and go to the archive, the radio archive, and you will find uh, these each of these teaching sessions, and you'll be able to uh, catch up and uh, be with us as we as we study through the pages of the study guide uh, each week. A quick reminder, too, friends, that uh, because this is a teaching edition, the phone lines are not open today. Again, I'm Bob Davis with Bob Christopher and Richard Pfeiffer, and on with the study. Yes, indeed. Well, uh, we we got to pick up at the bottom of page uh, 53. We have a think about what this means section. It's interesting that Satan told just enough tr truth to make his lies more palatable. That's yes. how he operates. So we're learning some um, key things about our enemy, uh, how he tries to trick us, how he tries to deceive us. So he tells us just enough truth, and then he twists it at the end. Um, and, and and captures us that way. Um, so Adam and Eve, when they ate, they did not die immediately as far as uh, their physical death was yes. concerned, but their eyes were opened and they became like God, knowing good and evil. And here's what the Lord God said, the man, the man has now become like one of us, knowing good and evil. He must not be allowed to reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. So God did not want man to be permanently separated from God. Correct. So he banished them from the garden, and he protected that tree of life until the sin issue could be dealt yes. with once and for all. So as we kind of leave this story, we see Adam and Eve, who were once on the inside, once enjoying a relationship with God the Father, once enjoying the very life of God each and every day, now on the outside looking in, mm -hmm. separated from God and separated from this tree of life. So here's what that means to us, or uh, as far as they were concerned. They died spiritually at that moment. Physically, eventually, God indeed did tell the truth. They did experience death. Now, did God leave them without hope? Did God leave them without uh, a plan that was in his mind. And no, he didn't. And we see that in Genesis 3, 14 and 15. So the Lord God said to the serpent, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. This is the first, um, I guess, look at the gospel message yes. that God had a plan 
Satan looked like he had won the battle there at the garden in the very beginning. But God knew that wasn't the case. He had already uh, foreseen what was going to happen, and there was already a plan in place concerning Jesus Christ, the seed of the woman. And this Jesus, when he came on the scene, crushed the head of Satan. Even though Satan struck his heel Mm -hmm. in death, Jesus still crushed him. That's the good news of the gospel. And in crushing it, uh, crushing him, then we are free to experience life, to be restored yes. to what Adam and Eve had in the garden, a relationship with God and life through uh, faith in Jesus Christ. So what was the result of Adam and Eve's disobedience? And this is where this whole gar- garden story impacts us. Romans 5.12 says this, Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man and death through sin, and in this way death came to all men because all sinned. So how did Adam and Eve's sin impact you and me? Death came to me and to you and to everyone who's ever existed in the history of the world. That doesn't seem fair, does it? (laughs) No, actually. It doesn't. It really doesn't. But Adam was our representative, and what became of him became of all Mm -hmm. of mankind. We were in his his bloodline, so to speak, and as Adam became, we became. So how do we come into this world, alive spiritually or dead spiritually? Dead spiritually. You mean a little baby, that cute little bundle of joy, is dead spiritually? Yeah, uh, my the loud one. <laughs> my my daughter in law sent me a picture of of one of our granddaughters, and and she's just a beautiful thing and happy. And I said, oh, is she always like that? And about two minutes later, she sent me another picture. No, she's not always that way. No. She, she's selfish and willful and hard-headed just like everybody yeah we see this condition this spiritual death show up pretty quickly in an infant's life i mean they learn to lie before they can talk right yeah (laughs) um they you know they're rebellious you tell them no don't put your hand in the fire or something like that what do they want to do put it right there right there don't get in the street don't do these things and 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 they tend to go Uh, against the rules, against the things that we have set up for them to protect them. Mm -hmm. We're we're not putting those rules on them to, uh, you know, so we'll like them or or that sort of thing. We know there's danger out there. So we set up a system of rules and regulations to protect them for their good, for their benefit. And immediately they start to rebel. That's just human nature apart from Christ Jesus. Those are symptoms of this spiritual death that we all come into the, this world yes. with. And, and that doesn't change until we come to faith in Jesus Christ. So there was sin in the garden, and there was a consequence. That consequence was death, and that death came to all men. We see that the psalmist said, we're all corrupt. Our deeds are vile. There's no one who does good. All have turned aside. They have together become corrupt. There is no one who does good, not even one. And Paul expands on that in his great letter to the Ephesians. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. Like the rest, we were by nature objects of wrath. That's the condition of all of us, and that's the result of sin. Yes that was in the garden when Adam and Eve chose to rebel against God, chose to live independently of God, chose to partake of the knowledge of good and evil, that consequence of death passed to all of us. And next week, we're going to take a look at what the cross of Jesus Christ accomplished so that we could be restored back to life. Be sure to have your copy of the study guide, The New Covenant Journey, and again, you can get yours at basicgospel.net slash teaching. That's basicgospel.net slash teaching. Remember also, friends, that Basic Gospel is a listener-supported outreach, and we need your help to continue to bring the good news to the airwaves every day. 
Well, thanks for being with us today, everybody. Now for Bob Christopher, Richard Piper, and the ministry staff, I'm Bob Davis, inviting you to be with us again on Monday for our next live edition of Basic Gospel. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.